And what it says is let P be a polar point R theta and, um, and the rectangular coordinates be x, y. Then they have all these formulas. And again, it's like, does this really like, make sense? Or like, how does this make sense? Well, again, previously what we dealt with, it was a point, x, y, right? On a coordinate plane. That's all we knew. You know what? That's an x, y point. And then in this chapter, what we did is we started talking about the distance that point was away. Right? And if you remember in our trigonometry, we actually called that r. There's notes that says that's your r. And then we created a nice little triangle, and we said that was x, and that was y. And that was what we talked about. One of the definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent was x over r, y over r, and so on and so forth. And then what we did is we took away those definitions, because what did we do with r? We made r 1. Right? But still, it still represented the distance away. It didn't go away. We just simplified things for the unit circle to make r equal to 1. And that was helpful because then what we could do once we recognize, once we use this as a unit circle, remember the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta, so then what we did is we recognized, well, there's an angle here, which we call theta. And then we could recognize, if r is 1, we could recognize this side length is theta. Why? Cosine, remember, is x over r. But if r is 1, we could just say that's cosine of theta. And they're same, in the same reasoning, we could use this as sine of theta. And that's what came down to this simplified process of, oh, this is cosine of theta, sine of theta. Agreed? Right? And that's what everybody remembers. Oh, what's cosine? Oh, it's the x. What's sine? Well, it's the y. Yeah, that's when it's on the unit circle. That's when r is 1, right? Don't forget. Sine is still opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is still adjacent over hypotenuse. We just simplified things when we had r is equal to 1. Okay? And as you guys have noticed so far in this chapter, r is not always equal to 1. Now we're going to have different values of r. So how is that going to impact our polar points? Well, again, x on the unit circle, when r is equal to 1, x equals cosine of theta. We know that. But again, guys, what happens if I extend? my r to be 2, right? Is this still, like, if you think about this, all you're going to do is just multiply by 2, or whatever your r is. So x is going to equal whatever the r is times the cosine of theta, right? That's where that relationship comes from. And the same thing, y is going to equal r times the sine of theta, right? Sine of theta is equal to y. But if you multiply this by 2, you're just going to do 2y. Right, or two, whatever the you know, sine, of, sine of theta is. Does that kind of make sense? Love it. All we're doing is expanding it out there. And again, if you look at these circles, I kind of wrote a lot in there. Um, but you can see you're just, it's, it's all going to be proportional in that regard. Um, the other thing we can also go through is, again, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Tangent of theta equals y over x. These aren't th things you need to know. I mean, these aren't things that are new to you. You already know these. Right? Yes? Everything up there, you already like pretty much the only thing new that I'm saying is when we don't have r equaling 1, you just got to make sure you multiply that by cosine theta. Yes? So that's where, that's where all those formulas come from. And because you're not going to be provided those formulas.